<clears throat> what is up, you guys? And of course, as always, welcome back to another Bala Pokemon League battle and the quarterfinals. Awesome! This is just as far as I get when it comes to Bala Pokemon League. I usually get knocked out here, and uh, we're facing off against Carl again, which was my last opponent before going into playoff. I won that game. And due to that, I actually avoided the eighth final matches, and which means that the quarterfinal is where I was directly qualified to. However, Carl was successful in winning that game, which means we face Carl again. Fuck. It, it's really not a good time. Carl's team is very tough on me, and while it is different this time around, so is my team. Due to consideration of how that game went, I decided to redesign my team in a very rough draft i would say i actually decided to drop out jellicent and uh, for slowbro decided to drop cryogonal for frostlass and tauros for kangaskhan while i didn't necessarily want to drop tauros uh, i really had to do something to be able to get more bulk into my team slowbro really just is that jellicent while being a good defensive pokemon didn't necessarily do much versus uh, for me versus carl and considered that he was a very likely opponent to face again I decided to, you know what, I need to get Bro, and so I did. Uh, so Slowbro is here, and it's a very good defensive Pokemon. Now, due to us barely winning last time, actually I was very lucky, I decided here to get a help from my good friend Ellis, or Friquette. So major thanks to him for helping me building this team in uh, the way it is. Uh, while it looks roughly the same for my previous idea of this car, I really wanted an outside look for really one reason, and that was to make sure that my team was different yet still the same versus Carl because facing against another player when you needed to win the previous time really makes it tough the second time around because well kind of need to go on the same route again to see which one is stronger hell now um Carl still looks roughly the same with only Mian Xiao as a different Pokemon this time around uh which worked for us and really glad not to see Vaporeon because I do believe Vaporeon is a good response to my defensive responses in Among Us and Slowbro uh, other than that, my team is the following, a super fat Slowbro, uh, fully defensive, able to withstand a Jolly Psyguard or a Bandit Psyguard to be able not to be too hit killed. Frostless being a Scarf variant to be able to deal with Aerodactyl and Psyguard. At the same time, it also has Spikes and Destiny Bond. If things go south, I can be able to pull that up. Um, in theory, only one layer of Spikes for combo to sweep this team. I'm going to go over that a little bit very soon. Among Us is Assault Vested this time around. However, this time I am zero IV in my uh, attack. I wasn't that last time, which meant that our battle versus Carl got really tough because Sargar got to recover. Uh, that necessarily won't happen this time. Um, Assault vs. Kangaskhan with um, massive investment in attack, uh, able to deal with any of his uh, special defensive threats, should, should be able to do fairly alright. The main idea for Kangaskhan, this specific Wi-Fi bell, was to actually maneuver around, uh, uh, oh, what do you call it? Hmm, hmm, hmm. You call it Gra Greninja, Graninja, because Greninja, of course, can do super effective damage towards both Slowbro and Among Us. So Kangaskhan kind of baits it, and also with Fire Punch and Ice Punch is able to uh, KO the things that matters. We we'll also have Facade, just in case something carries Toxic, or if you had Vaporeon with Skull, that would have been able to actually be a possible switch in. So, I think that will work. Uh, this time, I don't have a choice of Bandit Sister. I have an Iron Plate variant with Sword Stance. Should be able to late game sweep if we're able to get that option. Uh, that said, you know, Bullet Punch isn't something that isn't doing super effective damage towards neither uh, Theraphon nor Greninja. So, they need to be in range for that to matter. We have Super Power here to be able to put plus 2 to do 80% on a defensive Theraphon. So, it's an option and it's definitely an option I will consider. Last Pokemon, Kama O. Last time this one was scarfed, this time it is a Dragon Dance Expert Belt variant. My reason for this is because last time I don't believe Choice Scarf did me any favors, mainly because his side was Dragon Dance and outspeeding Kama O um, after one Dragon Dance, even if I was scarfed. So that was a really, really tough option. Uh, so Kama's best option here is to be bulletproof, to be completely immune to Theraphorn, since Jarabol is completely well walled out and not doing any damage. So I should be able to have a layer of spikes to go for a Dragon Dance versus that and actually kind of sweep unless they have something that is scarf for this Wi-Fi Bell, which Mian Xiao could be. Uh, I think that is the only scarfed option. Other than that, Kama is a tremendous threat towards him. 
And I just really hope that works in the grand scheme of things. Now, this was a lengthy battle with both really, really thick walls here. That's the reason it's so long. So with that said, you know, I'm going to lead off with uh, Slowbro and we we'll take it from there. I really hope it leads with something else than Mian Shou. So that said, let's go into the match. So yeah, from the get-go here, we do get kind of the prediction wrong as Mian Shou is his lead. However, knockoff nor U-turn won't do necessarily high damage on me. So with this in mind, I actually decided to go for a skull, figuring that he probably go for a U-turn and most likely go into Theraform. I really want to catch that in the switch and, and get it burned. Well, Blue Beast comes and uh, yeah, we, we don't do anything towards that. Showcasing that this is definitely a bulkier uh, Sylveon with leftovers. Yeah, that kind of um, kind of speaks for us also. I don't know how bulk it is since I don't have investment on my slow roll anyway. So I'm switching out and going to Cumberdale, my Among Us, as he goes for a wish here. At this point, I figured he probably tried to switch into something that could benefit on the switching. I figured Aerodactyl was a very fair option. So with that in mind, I switched out myself going into Frostlass. Uh, he actually goes to spike his uh, Ferrothorn, which is great for us, if anything. I mean, at this point, I do get my layer of spikes and I get my free setup. So I go for spikes, clearly. That's, that's here to say since it doesn't have a defogger. He actually optimized to go for a knockoff. I do survive this, but not only that, it, that gets me the option to go for Destiny Bond, and uh, you know, I could go for a second layer of Spike, but I really was hoping that he would go for another knockoff or Jarable, which it does. So we get Ferrothorn out of the way. At the same time, here, I do realize that my easy way of actually just setting up and win with Kamo uh, was out the window, but I do get rid of uh, Ferrothorn, which was a very strong threat towards Scissor. So uh, we do get, a, both our, get our free switchings here. Unfortunately for us, I do get this prediction right uh, or wrong as Miensha comes in. Bring in Slowbro, soak whatever I want to soak, as Knockoff does, roughly 100, I do lose my leftovers, but it's quite right, as I do decide to stay in here, and I actually went for a Toxic, should probably go for a Slack Off, to be completely honest, a bit of misplay, I really thought that he was not willing to risk the Mian Show for a possible Psychic, unfortunately for us, Knockoff is now able to KO us, so I need to switch out, Thanos is my main switch in here, and while this will allow us to actually get a free Dragon Dance, due to me lost an Expert Belt, I won't be able to KO the Sylveon on the Switch if it's a defensive Pokemon. So, you do bring in the Blue Beast, which is alright, but at the same time, as stated, I lost Expert Belt, so I can't KO him here. So Dragon Dance is kind of wasted, as I don't necessarily want to take a risk here. Um, I did that plain offensively versus Carl last time, I don't want to do the same mistake this time. So with this in mind, I'm gonna switch into Cumberdale Mamongus again and soak the Moonblast basically. I was kinda hoping he was Hyper Voice, but it, it's alright. Uh, I do lose my special attack here, it doesn't necessarily matter. Uh, Sylveon, unless it has something weird like Hall Mind or Psy uh, Shock, can't deal with me whatsoever. So I'm bringing Ostma here again, I really wanna see him go for a wish, which he does. Uh, this means that I not only get a regenerate to keep on going, it means that you know I'm getting fully healthy with my uh, Slowbro again, which initially was the kind of a ni the nifty idea here, is to kind of not be willed down by any of his defensive responses. As it goes for Moonblast, uh, I mean, I'm a Salt Vest, but I still think that does a decent chunk on me, as um, I'm in a good spot here, just spamming a return. Um, it does a really strong damage, which shows me it probably isn't that defensive, so it was unfortunate I didn't go for an Iron Head there with Karma. Oh, now, I do get a fair amount of damage, so that's okay, but at the same time, you know, we're dealing with a Mian Xiao here. I'm forced to switch out yet again, since it possibly could be taken out by High Jump Kick. So, Ospa, my Slowbro, is the switch in. He actually has Brain Punch. This is very good for us, because this means one thing, and, and really one thing that I think matters a lot for us, and that is the High Jump Kick can't uh, or isn't something he has, and also means that he can't want to kill my combo at the range. Yes, is I am able to actually set up again. Now, I do decide to go for a Toxic, predicting his U-turn, as we get Greninja in here. Greninja is a Pokemon that I definitely can't one we won with anything. Um, Kangaskhan can come in freely, but I can't switch in onto it. So with this in mind, I'm kinda need to just force it to stay in and keep on attacking me, as unfortunately for us, he goes for a U-turn. And here's what I felt, you know, here comes the stomach pain. Here comes Sagod, and I wasn't... I wasn't ready. My body wasn't ready for this, as my only switch in here is Slowbro. Um, I should say, luckily for us, you know, we, we are in a good amount of health. 
But he goes for Dragon Dance and you know this, this is scary. Depending on what it does, it is a scary option before to be dealing with. I am treated killed by this Pokemon. Um, but he does decide to switch out in case I have Ice Beam. Luckily for us, we kind of bluff that. Uh, to, to some extent, I guess. As I go directly for a Skull, baiting for the burn. Uh, now, of course, uh, I can't 2 it KO uh, Sylveon and he's able to wish up against me. A and it's okay. I think I decided here to go for a Toxic because at this point I kind of realized that it's very unlikely since I had Phantom Pass that he has Heal Bell. Which means I get resealed damage onto this Pokemon no matter how I want to bait it around. And our kind of our idea for this Wipe Bell was to kind of Toxic the things that are defensive and regenerate the core stall anything that I can regenerate to store or stall. So I bring in the Mongoose, it goes for Moonblast. Um, we're able to eat this up fairly alright as I yet again get a special attack drop. Uh, but at this time I actually will decide to go for a sludge bomb. Um, mainly because I kinda I kinda wanna invite my opponent here to uh, to make the switches off his own as I feel that I am in a good spot of kind of just I wouldn't say threaten my opponent, but rather force him out to some extent because Sludge Bomb's still doing damage and his Toxic still actually is racking up. So at this point, I am still okay and he's actually going to die if he stays in there. So with that in mind, I decided to switch out, bringing in Shidra, thinking that he could go for Banner Pass if, it is some, if I am unlucky and if that's the case, I'm bringing in, he's going to bring in Mian Xiao, which means his wish will be wasted. Um, which is great. We, we got this thing right and I can yet again just do the easy switch and bring in, in my slow bro again. As you guys kind of figured, um, I am playing defensive response after defensive response. Even if it goes for U-turn, it, it doesn't necessarily matter because it just do so little damage on the slow bro because it's so fat. Uh, so it brings in Greninja. Um, at this point, you know, I'm still going to do for defensive play, which will mean I'll go into a Mongoose. I really have no water option, as I'm predicting him to now go for an Ice Beam. Uh, he actually goes yet again for a U-turn. Uh, so we keep some whittling around here, but due to me having a layer of spikes, it is very clear that he losing... I, I don't need momentum, I just need him to lose momentum. Uh, that's the only thing that matters for me as... Uh, yeah, yet again, you know, I'm bringing in slow bro due to regenerator. I'm, you know, back at full. You know, it, it's that bad. As it goes for knockoff, um, I think it does roughly 25%. So that's really, really tough for my opponent. Now he'll keep going for that as I actually go for a slack off here. Uh, no reason for me not to actually, since of course toxic is racking up on him, and it's just, it's just ugly. Uh, he really needs to make an offensive breakthrough as I'm clearly just. Uh, parrying whatever he tries to do. Now, I think here I actually decided to do pull a double and go into Thanos, which was unfortunate because I kind of felt that, you know, I had an opportunity of going for a setup here. Missed that opportunity, I'm forced to switch out and go into bring Among Us, and uh, he, my opponent has to go for a Dark Pulse instead of an Ice Beam, which doesn't do anything, um, considering it was a crit. But here's the thing though, I'm pretty sure this time he's ICMC, so I'm actually going to switch into, into my Slowbro, actually brings a Psyguard and this is good because I need my Slowbro to be on par with the Psyguard uh, 1 versus 1 before it sets up because I need two chances to burn this Pokemon as he going to go for Dragon Dance, he's going to go for the possible sweep and I'm basically banking on the Skull Burn at this point you know there's really nothing else I can do as we just don't get it the first time he goes for a thousand arrows and it does nothing because he's jolly, and I go for Scald, and we will actually get the bird, and here we go. Here basically means that I most likely have won, because he has no longer any offensive options to do me right, and I also know I have to do one really, really serious play, and that is bring in my Scissor, go for the Sword Stance, try to wrap the game up. Uh, at this point, there is really nothing, like I said, my opponent can do. Um... It really was one of those very, very ugly games where um, since I played offensively versus um, Carl the first time, I wasn't successful in that. Um, I needed to play the same game and I really, like I said, I took help from another player which I know is really good at playing defensive and see defensive calls. I needed him to just look it over and see what we could do and uh, we realized watching through the game again versus him that the easiest way of dealing with Carl was not to try to win any offensive momentum because it was kind of redundant considering that 
Carl always played good defensively, it was trying to punish him for playing defensively, which meant toxic and just survive any matchup. Like, no matchup was going to be able to do with Keoas. And I think we got there. And um, luckily for Carl, I did have the, you know, the offensive options to set up, but I didn't need them because um, Slow Run Among Us was just so annoying for him to push back together with Toxic. And I get his offensive threats and defensive threats Toxic. And from there, there really was no way of him actually retaliating versus me. And we do win the game due to this very reason. Um, like I said, I think it looks ugly uh, because I really, I really, I'm not accustomed to playing this Stolly. But versus Carl, I was kind of forced to. There is no other po Pokemon trainer like Carl who is so good at playing defensive responses that I needed to kind of maneuver myself into an environment where I basically was hoping uh, to be able to get an offensive momentum by playing defensively. So it kind of worked. I mean, I win here 5-0. I don't believe it's very fair uh, because the end, the clock, actually, I think this game was 40 turns and I'm pretty sure that the clock was around 5 minutes left when the game was over. Uh, so it was roughly 10 minutes, I do believe that we all have 5 Pokemons left, which would have actually meant a draw for the both of us. So a quick rundown here, I just kind of want to thank Carl. Um, I really, really think he had a tremendous season and he really was just as good as me. Um, when it comes to this season, and facing him in the quarterfinal felt, felt tough. Uh, I knew that Carl could very well have won this season, and the matchup he had versus me the second time around was a lot tougher than the first time, and uh, that's nothing I won't like negate or anything. I think that's that's God and proof. Um, that said, um, first game versus Carl, I think he deserved to win the game. I think he played. A lot better than me this time i really was playing the same way he was trying to do but kind of punish him in the way he used to play and i think i got the maneuverability to pull this game off and i'm i'm not as i'm really not lucky this time around this time was a lot of defensive strategies involved that worked because carl probably was thinking and uh, that i would play a lot differently than i did last time which i actually didn't i mean among us being assault vested yet again was something that he was not particularly fond of, I'm pretty sure of that. And also, Aerodactyl this time actually was, and I really can't stress this enough, it was defensive to be able to survive a banded um, Scissord. And that's really, really cool. And I was really sad not to be seeing that. I, uh, like I said, Iron Plate Scissor really did a number on his team there at the end. Uh, we could very well have done that earlier, but with Ferrofon gone, I just didn't have any Pokemon that I could set up against. All of his Pokemon had an offensive response to anything I did and I felt that that was really tough on me throughout the wi battle because I really wanted to break through but his matchup just didn't allow it so it became one of those really defensive shaking games and I'm not particularly fond of uploading them at the same time that I really have to say that this was probably the only way I was going to win versus Carl he is that good um, playing offensive versus Carl can be extremely punishing and I was very lucky to come on top on this one anyway I would say not lucky but you know Trying to say, you know, had I done a wrong play, he probably, you know, punish me for it. It's extremely likely. Um, so that said, next time we're going up against Sticks, and it's going to be a showdown upload. So, not my favorite. I really prefer the Wi-Fi upload, but yeah, you know, semifinals, and it doesn't have a 3DS. You know, what can you do? Um, that game is also going to be tough, but I'm just happy to be in semifinals. Never been in that in my own league. Kind of figures that was kind of strange. Uh, really glad to be there. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway guys with that said i really just want to thank you guys for of course watching i hope you enjoyed this wife bell even though it is a bit of a stall your side hope you guys understand why i had to do so looking at carl's team one kind of figures you know we need to get in the opportunity to play defensively versus him because you know we just aerodactyl comes in and that's gg uh so that's it guys thank you of course also for watching and i'll see you next week i was gonna say but you know we never know when i upload again <laughs> anyway guys thank you for watching take care bye